Test-driven development is strongly related to the topic automated testing, which was covered in our last tutorial, so check that one out. And now let's talk about what test-driven development actually is. Very often, test-driven development is described as a method for developing programs. But I think it's actually a discipline. It's in the very nature of disciplines to be boring, but on the other side to be really helpful in the short term, but especially in the long term. So for example, brushing your teeth twice a day can be really boring. But on the long term, it's very important for the health of your teeth. And that's the same with test-driven development. So the steps and rules might be boring and unnecessary, but on the long term, they are really helpful. So in a nutshell, test-driven development is a discipline of writing test code before production code. Uncle Bob defines three laws or three rules for test-driven development, which describe TDD pretty well. First, you're not allowed to write any production code unless it is to make a failing unit test pass. Second, you're not allowed to write any more of a unit test than is sufficient to fail. Compilation failures are also failures. And third, you're not allowed to write any more production code than is sufficient to pass the one failing unit test. I know this sounds a little bit abstract, but before we jump into an example, I want to show you the three steps of TDD, which guarantee that you're following the three rules I described before. Step number one, create the unit test that fails. Step number two, write production code that makes the test pass. And step number three, refactor your code and clean up the mess you just made. This process is also known as the red-green refactor cycle. Because firstly you write a test that fails, which is marked as red. Then you write production code to make the test pass. Then the test is marked as green. And lastly, you refactor and clean up the production and test code. And then you start all over again. Test scripts are editor scripts. So create an editor folder and put in a new script called point calculator tests. Open the script with a double click. Now include the end unit framework namespace and get rid of the mono behavior inheritance. Create a new method called calculate points tests and mark it with a test attribute. First, in the range part, we create a point calculator. The test fails because the class doesn't exist. Back in Unity, we create a new script in our script folder called point calculator. And we also get rid of the mono behavior. This was our first development cycle. So we had a failing test and only wrote as much code needed to make the test pass. Then in the act part of our test, we call the calculate points method. We pass three killed enemies, zero killed villagers and a multiplicator of one. Again, our test fails because the method doesn't exist. Back in the point calculator class, we create the head of the method. Next, we want to store the calculated points. But yet, the calculate points method doesn't return anything. So we change the return type from void to int. And the easiest implementation is to return zero. Okay, let's add another variable which stores the expected points. In our case, we get 100 points for each killed enemy and multiply the whole thing with the multiplicator of 1. In the assert phase of our test, we assert that the returned points are equal to the expected points. Then we run the test in Unity and see that it fails. The easiest implementation would be to just return 300. The test passes and we continue with another test. Just copy and paste the previous test and change the killed enemies from 3 to 5. Let our second test fail. Now we try to make the test pass again 
and decide that the easiest implementation is to multiply the killed enemies with 100. Great, our second test passes. Now let's do some refactoring since our two tests are very similar. With n unit it's possible to create so-called test cases. Test cases feed one single test with different input values. Therefore we need to equip our test with parameters. Killed enemies, killed villagers, multiplicator and the expected points. We substitute the hard-coded values with our new variables. And we can delete our second test. Now we define our first test case, which is 3 killed enemies, 0 killed villagers, a multiplicator of 1 and an expected points of 300. We copy the test case and change it from 3 killed enemies to 5. The test should pass and we know that our refactoring didn't broke anything. Let's add another test case and instead of a multiplicator of 1 we use a multiplicator of 2. We expect that with 5 killed enemies we get 1000 points. Of course the test fails because yet we don't make use of the multiplicator. The test passes. Now the killed villagers come into play. For each killed villager you get 100 minus points. So with 5 killed enemies, 1 killed villager and a multiplicator of 2, we expect the points to be 800. Again, the test fails. Since the method is getting more complicated, we divide it into multiple parts. We start with 0 points, add 100 points for each killed enemy, subtract 100 points for each killed villager, and multiply everything with the multiplicator. Still everything works fine. We add another test case with 10 killed enemies. We want to get 500 extra points for each 10th killed enemy. For now it's enough to check if killed enemies is greater or equal to 10 and add 500 points. In another test case we try more than 20 killed enemies. We expect to get 1000 extra points. But yet our method doesn't provide us with the expected result. So we need to change the implementation. As you can see, I did something very dumb. But thanks to the tests, I can immediately spot the bug. But be careful, passing unit tests don't necessarily mean that you implement the right thing. They only mean that your production code satisfies the unit tests. Just to be sure, we add a non-failing test case. And lastly, we add a test case which tests if more than 10 killed villagers reset the multiplicator. So in the production code, we check if killed villagers is greater or equal to 10 and set the multiplicator to 1. Great! For now that are enough positive test cases. Since normally you have multiple tests for one single method, I like to put the tests for a method into regions. Also since we now know what we are testing, we can rename our test to calculate points, positive values, returns correct points. We should consider some edge cases. For example, what happens if negative killed enemies are passed to our method? In our case, it should throw an exception. 
we assert throws argument out of range exception. Then there follows a lambda expression. Within the lambda expression, we create a new point calculator called the calculate points method with minus one killed enemies. Yet, our method doesn't throw any exception. Also, I realized that we don't have a test case with zero killed enemies. At the beginning of our method, we check if the killed enemies is negative. If so, we throw an argument out of range exception. It may happen that you don't consider each possible test case. But with the test case attribute, you can easily add more and more test cases. For example, I forgot to consider what happens if the player only collects minus points. I decided to don't allow minus points. Lastly, we add a test for negative killed villages. And a test for negative or zero multiplicator. Since I want to test the multiplicator of zero and minus one, I could use test cases again. But instead, I make use of the values attribute. Alright, thanks for watching. I hope I could show you something new. If you liked it, please support us on Patreon or subscribe to our newsletter. Give the video a like and subscribe to our channel. So have a nice day, it's your sensei.